Hey, answer me. Stand and uphold yourself. Long live the king. An order? Hey, you kill those cats here upon your arm. Tis now struck twelve. Get thee to bed, Francisco. For this relief, much thanks. Tis bitter cold and I'm sick at heart. Have you had quiet, God? <coughs> oh, not a mouse stirring. Well, good night. If you do meet Marcellus and Horatio, the not rivals of my watch, bid them make haste. I think I hear them. Stand, ho! Who's left? Friends to this ground. And leech men to the day. Give you good night. Farewell, honest soldier. Who hath relieved you? Bernardo hath my place. Give you good night. Hola, Bernardo. Say what? Is Horatio there? A piece of him. Welcome, Horatio. Welcome, good Marcellus. What, does this thing appear again tonight? I have seen nothing. Horatio says it is but our fantasy. <laughs> will not let me leave. take hold of him touching this dread thing twice. <laughs> <laughs> tush, tush. It will not appear. Sit down a while and let us once again assail your ears that are so fortified against our story what we have tonight seen. Well, sit we down and let us hear Bernardo speak of this. Last night of all, when yon same star that's westward from the pole had made its course to loom that part of heaven where now it burns, Marcellus and myself, this the great me off. Look, when he comes again, in the same figure like a king of the stage. Well, the scholar speak to his ratio. What's he not like the king? Mark his ratio. Most like. He hires me with fear and wonder. He spoke to. Speak to it, Horatio. What of that? That you search this time of night. Together with that fair and warlike form in which the majesty of Peridem might did sometimes march. By heaven, I tried to speak. He's offended. Stay! Speak! Speak! I charge thee, speak! It is gone. And will not answer. How now, Horatio? You tremble and look pale. <coughs> Is not this something more than fantasy? Oh my God! I might not disbelieve without a true and sensible badge of my own eyes. Is it not like the king? As thou art to thyself, it is very strange. Thus twice before, and just at this dead hour, with martial stalk, hath he gone by our watch. In what particular thought to work, I know not. But in the grossing scope of my opinion, this boat some strange eruption to our state. Good. Now, sit down, and tell me, he that knows why this same strict and most observant watch so nightly toils the subject of the land, who is it that can inform me? That can I, at least the whisper goes so. Our last king, whose image even but now appeared to us, was, as you know, by Fortinbras of Norway, dared to the combat. <laughs> now, sir, young Fortinbras, no. Of unimproved metal, hot and full, half in the skirts of Norway, here and there sharp to the list of lawless resolutes, to recover of us by stronger hand and terms compulsory, those foresaid lands say by her father last. And this, I take it, is the main motive of our preparations. Well, I think it be no other but he so. Well, may it so that this portentous figure comes after our watch so like the king that was and is the question of these wars. <coughs> the salt! Oh! Here it comes again! Trust it, don't blast me! Stay, Luther! But thou hast any sound, or use of voice, speak to me! If there be any good thing to be done that to thee may do ease, or grace to me, speak to me! If thou art privy to thy country's fate, which happily for knowing may avoid, oh, speak! But if thou hast a pawn in thy life, exalted treasure in the womb of earth, for which they say you spirits are fought in death, speak of it! Stay and speak! Stop it, my It is gone. There's about to speak when the cock crew. But it started like a guilty thing upon a fearful summons. Look. The morning russet mantle clad walks over the dew of yon high eastern hill. Break we up our watch. And by my advice, let us impart what we have seen tonight unto young Hamlet. For upon my life, this spirit done to us will speak to him. Let's do it, I pray. And I know where this morning we shall meet him most convenient. 